Which finds you doing this week, Pete? Well, I've done, uh, I've done West Ham and I've done St Johnston. Yeah, I've only done Watford. Well, you have to do another if you're going for 85 draws. Yeah. <laughs> so, best odds you can get is that 85 draws. Yeah. Just never come up. <laughs> I was reading the Bible the other day, you know. It's very good, isn't it? It's a very, um, it's a very good book, Dad. It's beautifully done, it's beautifully bound, beautifully put together. I was reading that chapter about uh, Ismail Begat Rumar and Rumar begat Isibar and Isibar begat this other bloke. <laughs> and uh, is that yeah. the getting chapter where everyone begat? Each other. Yeah. Well, that's a sort of uh, sort of historical document, Pete. Uh, <laughs> that's like you know, everybody you know uh, gave birth to who and that. Yeah, it's like they have a sunset house, isn't it? It's yeah. like uh, George Meacham, he begat Daphne Meacham, and Daphne Meacham begat uh, Fred Treble, and so on. It's all down there. Isn't no. it? Of course, you know, uh, you can trace it all back to Adam and Eve. The yeah. first two. Yeah, they were first two. But what I don't understand, Pete, is uh, how two people uh, could have produced so many millions of different uh, colour, race and creed. <laughs> You mean, how did Adam and Eve have all these children of different colours? Yeah. Yeah, well, the point of that, Dad, is that Genesis isn't true in the literal sense. It's an allergy. <laughs> Genesis is an allergy of luck on this show you mean. It's about the whole lot of human race. Adam and Eve aren't just Adam and Eve. They're the human race personified. That's why, you see, oh. it all happened like that. Yeah. Do you believe in God, actually? Well, I'll tell you, Pete, um... When I'm in a tight spot, you know, uh, I think to myself, uh, uh, God, please help me out if you're there. Uh, if you do help me out, I believe in you. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know you're there for future reference. Yeah, yeah I have a similar attitude. Whenever I feel ill, you know, I've got a dose of flu, I say a little prayer. Yeah. I say, dear God in heaven, if you're there, heed my prayer. Yeah. If you're not there, don't take any notice. <laughs> but if you are, make me better by Tuesday at 12 o'clock and I'll know you've done it and I promise to be good forevermore and believe in you. Yeah. Of course, the trouble is when you get better, you don't know whether it's because God's done it or whether you would have got better in any case. <laughs> There's no real way of telling what no. he's up to or even if where he is. No, you can't tell, can you, really? I often wish he'd... Uh, He'd manifest himself a bit more, you know, yeah. in the sky. Yeah, it'd be nice if, uh, you know, every now and again he parts the clouds in a golden burst of sunshine gives us a wave, you know. Yeah. So, hello, I'm here, you can believe in me, you know. Hello, believe me, I'm God. Yeah. Well, you'd know, uh, you'd know where you were. I asked the Reverend Stevens about this, Father Stevens, and he said, much as God would like to keep manifesting himself, he dare because it debases the currency, you see. Yeah. He can't appear more than once every few million years. He can't go around to football matches and fates and everything. Otherwise, I'll think, you know, he's uh, debased in some way. So once a million years, if we're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, actually, Pete, I often wish that I'd never been told about God at all, you know, because it means you can't get away with nothing, does it? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you, uh, you're told about him, you know he's there, or you, you think he's there, yeah. and you don't know... Uh, you know, you can't really mess about then, can you? You can't. No. I mean, what about them people uh, who haven't been told about God? Well, I asked the Reverend Stevens this, and he said, if you haven't been told about God, Dad, you're laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know good from evil, then you're away. You can do anything you really will like. Yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> There's these people in New Guinea, for example. Yeah. They wander about with nothing on, and uh, they commit adultery and steal and cover each other's wives like everybody wants to do. <laughs> but as there aren't any vicars about, you see, to tell them anything, uh, they can't be got at. Yeah. So they go up to heaven, whatever they do. And this means all these nignogs are going up into heaven, yeah. and perfectly decent blokes like you and me are only <laughs> committing adultery, never even commit it. We still can't get up there. We've been kept out by these Guineans. <laughs> 
You see, I think in that place, you see, Pete, it'd be a crime to tell people about God, you see. Well, I've never told any about God, Doug. I've never told anyone. I haven't mentioned it to a soul, Pete. <laughs> but I think, on the other hand, St Paul, St Paul's got a bloody lot to answer for. Well, he started it, didn't he? All those letters he wrote. To the Ephiskans. You know, uh, dear Ephiskans, uh, stop enjoying yourself, God's about the place. <laughs> Time Paul. Yeah. You can just imagine it, can't you? There's a nice Ephiskan family settling down to a good breakfast of fried mussels and hot coffee and they're just sitting there, it's a lovely day outside, they think you're taking the children out, you know, for a picnic by the sea, by the lake and have a picnic there and everything's happy, the sun coming through the trees, yeah. birds are chirping away, boats bobbing on the ocean, boats bobbing on the ocean, <laughs> the distant cry, the distant cry of happy children, a cl cl uh, clouds uh, uh, scudding across the sky. Naturally, Dad, in fact, uh, the idyllic scene is what you call it, an idyllic scene when suddenly into the midst of it all tap, tap, tap on the bloody door. <laughs> you know what it is? No. It's a messenger bearing a letter from Paul. They rush to the door to open it, thinking it may be good news. Perhaps grandfather's died and left in the video. <laughs> they open it up and what do they discover? Dear George and Deirdre and family, stop having a good time. Resign yourself not to having a picnic cover yourself with ashes and start flailing yourselves. Till further notice. <laughs> Sign Paul. Yeah. It's a dreadful sort of letter to get, isn't it? It's terrible, that, isn't it? Of course, you know, actually, I'm very fascinated by uh, those religions that say you come back in uh, a different form. Reincarnation. Yeah. Reincarnation, yeah. that's Buddhism. Oh, is it? Yeah, a Buddhist believe in that, coming back as a different creature of some kind or uh, other. What do you come back as? Well, I think if I had a choice, I'd probably come back as a, as a royal corgi, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go sniffing around the palace, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good, actually, improve your station. And yeah, stuff. come yeah. up with Peg. Well, of course, you could come back as something terrible, couldn't you, really? I mean, suppose you came back as a humble mayfly. Well, of course, then you'd only live for six hours, wouldn't you? Yeah. They have a very futile life, the mayflies. They only live six hours. As soon as they're born, they're worried about old age. Yeah. <laughs> By the time they're three hours old, they're feeling middle-aged. They can't run for buses like they used to. They've got grey hairs all over the legs. And by the time they're six <laughs> hours old, they die. Yeah. It's a dreadful business. Yeah. Uh, you know Mr. Thomas? Yeah. Next door? Yeah. He's a Buddhist. He's nice. Yeah. He's a Buddhist. Is he really? Yes, he's a Buddhist. He's yeah. got this blue bottle in the bathroom. Yeah. He's, he thinks it's Keats. <laughs> <laughs> Thinks it's a poet Keats reincarnated, so he keeps going in the bathroom, takes it in marshmallows and marmalade, the blue bottles are about, oh, it's getting very big and fat. Uh, Horrible great thing, he puts out bits of paper hoping it will complete some poems. <laughs> He's just got a lot of blue bottle dropping so far. <laughs> he still frames them though. Oh. <laughs> Well, it probably means something to another blue bottle, do Well, it? to a blue bottle, uh, they'd understand it, yeah. I suppose. Of course, you know, actually, I'd like to come back as a sparrow, so I could see down ladies' blouses. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be much point to that, Dad. If you'd come back as a sparrow, you wouldn't want to look down ladies' blouses. <laughs> no, you just want to look down sparrows' blouses. That's the only thing yeah. you'd be interested in as a sparrow. Yeah. If I had my choice, I'd like to come back as Grace Kelly. What's that? I've always wanted to know what she looks like in the bath. <laughs> I've always been fascinated by her glacial beauty, you yeah, know. Yeah. Always gone for that. Wonderful. Of course, actually, you know, Pete, in the end, uh, it's a bit of a toss-up as to which religion is right, isn't it, really? You don't, you don't actually know which religion is uh, right, do you? Oh, you can't tell. There's millions of religions. It might be tree worship, it might be Buddhism, it might be Christianity. You don't know what to go for, no, frankly. No. I mean, you might be a perfectly good Buddhist all your life, get up to heaven and there'll be the Reverend Stephen smiling all over his face and saying, get out, ha ha ha, Buddhism is wrong, we're right, get off with you lot. Alternatively, you might be a very good Christian, you see, Church of England, behave yourself very nicely, get up there, there's Buddha, laughing all over his face, sends you back as a worm. <laughs> There's no way of telling, really, what well, I do. I think the best thing to do is to uh, remain a prognostic. A prognostic. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think God's been listening while we've been talking? <laughs> well, if he exists, he's been listening, because he's omnipresent. He's heard every word we've said. Well, we'd we better look religious, then. 
Oh, it's no good just looking religious, Daddy can see through that, you have to be religious. <laughs>